Hey there, YouTubes and fellow teachers. The school year is ramping up and I wanted to get back into the uh, swing of making videos um, and focusing on Apps Script. I had a question uh, from a guy named Jeff McCandless um, somewhere in California about how to access page tokens when you connect with an API. So I thought I'd just run a quick little demonstration of how to do that. Um, in this example, I'm going to use the classroom API, pulling a list of students and then handling a number of different students. So um, this is my trainer account. So I don't really have a classroom that's big enough to um, have to pull in multiple pages. So we're going to actually just simulate it. But first, let me declare a variable and I'm just going to call it response and we're going to access classroom. I've already activated the advanced Google services here. Um, if you need to, uh, if you need to do that, I have other videos um, about how to uh, set that up, right? So go ahead and check those out if you need to. But um, if you're with me and you've already got some advanced services activated, let's go ahead and classroom, courses, students, and we are going to get a list. Now, in the kind of drop downs, the autocomplete, it's telling us to insert a course ID string. But it also gives us a course ID string with optional arguments here. Now, let's first do it with just the course ID, and then we'll talk about the optional arguments. So, um, if I go ahead and put this course ID that I've declared above, and I, I'm going to go ahead and move this global into uh, let's see, course ID, and then let's response.students.align. Go ahead and run that and pull that up in the logs. And you'll see I have three students in there, which is perfect because I have three students in here, just kind of demo students. <laughs> Right, but let's say you had 40 students or 50 students or 60 students and it only returned 25 of them. Well, that's where we need to actually pull in some uh, optional arguments here. Now in the classroom API, I've got two query parameters that it talks about page size and page token. Now with page size, let's go ahead and experiment with that one. I'm going to just add an object after this. Like when when I if I were to try to run this again and look at the optional arguments, it wants an object in here as the second argument for the list. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. I'll space it down so we've got some room to work with. Page size, let's say let's just say 1. So now I've got a page size of one. So one record with every page. Now let's see what happens when I look at the student's length. Run this again. Now I've got one here. Interesting. Because what it's telling, what this page size is doing is it's telling the API to only send me one record with every request. Well, what happens to the other two? Well, so they end up becoming part of, the, well, they end up becoming uh, paginated, I guess would be the right word. And the API is also going to be sending us a page token. So here on this response, I've got a next page token, which ends up being a string. So let's take a look at what that is here. Just a big old mess. Um, well, what looks like a mess to us, actually Google will understand that. And if we send that back to Google, it'll send us the next number of um, students according to the page size that we've declared. And in this case, we've just declared one. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to actually call this page token for as many pages as exist and then we're just going to concatenate them all into one array. Now that seems a lot more difficult than it actually is. So I'm going to just create a variable of students and that's going to be this students array. 
Now I'm going to use a while statement. And while, um, if you haven't used it before, is going to run every time this uh, statement is true, the statement inside of our parentheses. So while the response.nextPage token, while that is true because it's either going to be a string with the page token or it's going to be null, which evaluates to false. Okay, so in here, now I want to actually call, I want to get another response. I've already declared response, so I don't need var in front of it. We're going to actually just overwrite this response. And we're going to say response equals classroom dot courses students dot list and we're going to put that course ID in there again. And instead of declaring a page size, we're going to use this other parameter, page token. So let's go ahead and page token response next page token. OK, so that's going to actually overwrite our response variable. But then what do we do with it? Well, we need to grab the students off of that next response and then concatenate them with this. So I've got students equals students.concat and response.students. So now I'm going to go back to looking at the response. Well, I'll look at uh, students.length. So this students array should still be three. Even though I'm taking in a page size of one, it should be three. So let's take a look. I've got three students in there. Now, even if I change the page size to two here, it should still have three. Perfect. Um, and we can actually take a look at that. Let's say, let's do a students for each. Oh, cannot type function student. And we will log student.profile.name.fullName. And that should show us all of the students. Perfect. And if you don't set a page size in here, that's fine. It's going to give you the maximum records that are available. And in this case, it's never going to even run the while statement because it probably responds with three students. That's well within the, uh, the limits of a single page for the API. However, if you run into length issues, this is how you can very easily concatenate them all into one response. I hope that helped uh, illuminate a little bit of information about handling page tokens. It's a pretty common uh, thing that you'll see when working with APIs across the web. If you like this video, please subscribe. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Check me out at jordanray.com. Um, I do this professionally. So uh, let me know, you know what you're working on. And uh, I love talking to people about this stuff. So cheers, everybody, and happy coding.